This is Unfiltered Jake. I'm going to be talking about the Sean McVay whole coaching thing, what I think needs to happen, what I think will happen, and ultimately I'm going to take a little bit of a gamble here. So we'll start off right away. Before we get into it, be sure to like, subscribe, and comment. All right, let's let's dive right into it. So Sean McVay right now is debating whether or not he is going to come back and he's going to coach the Los Angeles Rams another year or he's going to retire and he has said this is not the end. He will coach again. He is only 36 years old, but it could be the end of him with the Rams because, I mean, I think we all know if Sean McVay leaves, it could be the same thing as Sean Payton, who we're seeing over with the Saints. The Saints have his rights. They're shopping him. Wherever he goes, the Saints are entitled to compensation. It'd be the same thing with Sean McVay. When you find your head coach and the coach in the past wants to come back, well, it's not as easy as just bringing him back, even though he did win a Super Bowl. Think about it. If the Rams hired anybody and they take him to the Super Bowl next year, is Sean McVay, who wants to potentially come back next year, is he the guy that you just let back in the building? Are you going to push the guy who just led this team to the Super Bowl following a 5-12 and season? Are you going to push him out of the building? So it creates a little bit of a conundrum to kind of solve. And um, I think it's very simple to say that Sean McVay is likely done with the Rams if they move on. Uh, without him if he moves on and he retires it does give the Rams free reign to kind of reset here I don't think they should but it does give them that reign there are unlimited opportunities uh you know different things that they could do this offseason the Rams could go in a complete polar opposite direction than where they were intending to go uh should this decision come down to it where he leaves or if he stays here's what I will say evaluating both sides If he leaves, you have a coaching staff that now Sean McVay has basically been open with and told, hey, if you have another opportunity somewhere, you might want to take that opportunity, or at least I don't want to hold you back because I don't even know what I'm doing yet. So I'm not going to say, hey, stay here. Uh, No. So there are a lot of guys on this coaching staff, and there are guys in this coaching staff that weren't necessarily coming back, right? But there are guys in this coaching staff that could come back, but also could get a job before McVay decides. That is not necessarily a guarantee that they don't leave before McVay decides. So keep that in mind. So if McVay does leave, not everybody in-house, so to speak, because of this is necessarily available. And I think that's a big, big thing here. It's important to realize Thomas Brown, who I continue to mention in live streams and podcasts, he is not a guarantee now with the uh, the news that you know these guys have been given the opportunity to go and look for potentially another offer, uh, another job opportunity. And so, you know, now it's Thomas Brown. Uh, it's also uh, Raheem Morris, who has two teams that want to interview him as a head coaching candidate. So you have to keep that in mind. That's significant. So you talk about those guys. Then you talk about guys like Chris Shula and Eric Henderson, guys that you have, you know, built up and maybe they have put themselves in a way to become a defensive coordinator or maybe even a head coach down the road. And so now all of a sudden, when you have all these guys moving all every which way, everybody that Sean McVay developed and Sean McVay doesn't come back well you might have to start from scratch. I mean, completely from scratch because the in-house guys, if they go and get a job, that creates a pretty big issue there. You don't have anybody to really promote to be a head coach. You don't have anybody to hire. So with that said, today's news that these guys will be looking for other opportunities, not necessarily leaving, but seeing what's out there certainly does put things in limbo more than just Sean McVay considering retirement. So if McVay does leave, and let's just say he leaves, and they do decide to go in-house, and they do not waste time, they know Sean McVay's leaving, so hey, we really like you, Thomas Brown, hey, we really like you, Raheem Morris, we want you guys to stay, you know, they offer both of them an opportunity to be head coaches, you know, whether that's Raheem Morris or Thomas Brown, um, they interview them both, whatever. They give them that opportunity. They give the opportunity to Chris Shula. They give the opportunity to Eric Henderson, uh, a coach Ejiro Evero, who was w- working in the sa- uh, the safety room. He was the secondary coach the year prior. Now, all of a sudden, he is interviewing for the job to come back as the Rams head coach. I think there are multiple avenues the Rams would consider going. Um, so I do think Ejiro Evero would be in play. 
I think Thomas Brown would be in play, and I think Raheem Morris would be in play. Those in-house guys I do think have a shot if McVay leaves. But if McVay leaves and those guys are also gone, then now you look at what the Rams might do as far as getting a big name in the office. And as far as that goes, the first name that comes to mind for a lot of people is Sean Payton. And then you have John Harbaugh, who might jump ship from college to the NFL. He's the one of only two college coaches to jump ship from college to the NFL and have a winning record. The other one is Bill O'Brien, uh, and he is the only one to have a really good winning record. Bill O'Brien barely was over 500. He was well over 500. Um, so look, is Harbaugh coming? I don't know. Is Sean Payton coming? I don't know. But those are two big names that have been talked about. The other ones are prospects. You know, you look at the 49ers and instantly D'Amico Ryans with that defense, he comes to mind. You know, maybe there are some guys, you know, you look at, you know, there's a potential firing here and there. Maybe Mike McDaniel gets let go by the Dolphins stupidly after, you know, losing in the playoffs this weekend against Buffalo. Um, and then he becomes available. And at that point, I mean, I think he would have to be one of the favorites. The Rams would be going after a young offensive mind, kind of similar to Sean McVay. That would make sense. Then you have Ben Johnson, the offensive coordinator for the Detroit Lions. Uh, you know, this guy is starting to really work his way up the rungs. He's becoming one of the best coordinators in the sport. And so I think he would get a run. And then you also have to look at, you know, guys like Cliff Kingsbury, Frank Reich, guys that are more on the outside. I wouldn't say they're the favorites. Um, you know, Shane Steichen, the uh, out the offensive coordinator for the Philadelphia Eagles. Uh, in addition to that, you know, you have guys like Jonathan Gannon, the defensive coordinator for the Philadelphia Eagles. I think that there are a lot of different avenues they could go. Uh, the one I will say they won't go is they won't bring Jeff Fisher back. That's all I know. Uh, but what I will say is that I think if they go outside the organization, I think they need to go with a prospect and not buy in the hype of any of the big names. Hear me out when I say this. I understand there's a lot of people that are going to watch this video and immediately be like, you know what? Sean Payton, he needs to be our head coach. Here's the thing, okay? This team would have to give up a first rounder for Sean Payton in all likelihood, maybe even a, like a second or a third, whatever. Point being, the Rams... I don't think are rebuilding. Okay. They may decide to, but as of right now, I don't think so. And just because Mike Florio said they were, doesn't mean they are. So when you have a core group of guys, you have Bobby Wagner, you have Jalen Ramsey, Aaron Donald, Matthew Stafford, Cooper cup. You got some young guys to be excited about with Ernest Jones, Tutu Atwell, Cam Akers, you know, guys like that, you know, that is not necessarily a team that I'm trying to explode. Okay. Dakota Durant corner, right? That's not a team I'm trying to blow up. This team was just in the Super Bowl and won the Super Bowl last calendar year. Okay. It was a bad year with unreal number of injuries in the trenches, injuries to their starting quarterback, their star wide receiver, their star pass rusher, a lot of injuries. Okay. And they are going to have to figure it out cap dollar wise. But you have to imagine that Tony Passors had a fail safe in place. Because you can't just plan ahead with the idea of, well, hopefully that doesn't happen. Because they always have to be prepared for what if this does happen. And so I think the Rams are going to figure this thing out. But I also don't think they're going to be as bad as people think. I don't think they are as bad as people think. You know how I know that? Because with a first place schedule and a target on their back being the defending Super Bowl champions, you know what the Rams did? While they went 5-12 and 12 with all those injuries, albeit, they also were in every single game except for the Chargers game. That's not the makings of a team that doesn't belong. I mean, we saw that with the Lions. The Lions were in almost every single game, even though they lost so many last year, and they turned around and they went 9-8 and eight the next year. But they're more talented. They have more there. So why are we giving up on this team? I'm not saying you are that's watching, but why are so many people giving up on this team? I think it's just to create a narrative. I think it's the sexy thing to say because it's it just fits into the narrative of they mortgage the future 
and now the rent is due. Uh, the payment is coming in full. And I would just say that is incredibly irresponsible um, to just say that they mortgage the future and this is it when they have all of these guys under contract. Rob Havenstein's under contract a long time as well as the core that I already mentioned. I just think it's a really irresponsible and ignorant thing that I see a lot of analysts um, and, you know, non, I guess, people that cover people that are covering the NFL that don't really cover the Rams, you know, exclusively, um, they're saying the same thing. So what are we talking about so far? Well, so far, we're talking about what happens without McVay. Okay. But I'm going to say I'd go with D'Amico Ryans. I'd go with a prospect over a big name. I'm not trading picks for Sean Payton. I'm not trading picks for Doc Rivers. That to me is what you're doing. Doc Rivers won a championship, right? Uh, Sean Payton won a championship. Sean Payton also went seven and nine, three straight years in a row with Drew Brees. Okay. That's one thing that's never talked about. Sean Payton also helped lead the Saints to cap hell. Look at the Saints right now. They are in shambles. Okay. They may have played, you know, pretty well towards the end of the year. They may have been like somewhat okay. They didn't like go two and 14 or two and 15, but they might as well have been. They, they needed to do that actually, because look at their, their cap situation. What Sean Payton left the Saints with, it was disastrous. And I think too many people look at this team and I keep hearing it. You need a big time coach to pump the talent out of these guys to get whatever you can out of these guys. I'm not trying to discredit how important Sean McVay is, but Sean McVay, I don't think is, you know, up and leaving this team in shambles. I think this team can compete. This team will have a third place schedule next year. And I think this team could be back in the NFC title, Super Bowl, whatever, with a few really decent moves. Good coaching staff. They're revamping the coaching staff. Who knows if McVay is the head coach, but I do think if you got a decent head coach that can be a true leader of men, we've seen it. It's not far-fetched. Zach Taylor went from worst to one of the best teams in the league playing in the Super Bowl in his second season. People were out on Zach Taylor. Now all of a sudden he does that. M Mike McDaniel took the Dolphins to the playoffs over the Patriots. He took the Dolphins to the playoffs. Just amazing what a one-year turnaround does. Look at what Tua did with him. The idea that these coaches can't just make a big leap in year one. And the idea that it, because it's LA, because it's Los Angeles, it's the city of angels. It's, you know, the city of champions. You need to be flashy. You don't need to be flashy. I mean, honestly, I think it's flashy enough getting a hot commodity prospect. If you get a guy like Ben Johnson and he brings that offense that we saw with the Lions to the Rams, that's pretty flashy to me. If you bring a guy like D'Amico Ryans, who put together the best defense, arguably, in football this year for the 49ers, that could lead to them winning the Super Bowl, that's pretty flashy for me, okay? you you, I'm not really worried about the coordinators. I'm not really worried about the offense, defensive mind. You need a guy that's going to be able to lead, okay? And this is not a rebuild. This is a reload situation if McVay leaves. But what if McVay stays? If McVay stays... I am concerned that it will be, still be a year-to-year -year thing. Like, hey, okay, he's going to maybe do it this year. He's going to maybe do it this year. Okay, it'll just keep going on. So at some point, he's going to take time away. So it, he would be on borrowed time, right? And doesn't mean he wouldn't come back, but with the Rams, we don't know. So if he stays, I think that's actually possible, um, pretty possible. And I'll get to my verdict at the end here. But if Sean McVay stays then I think now you look at it and the big thing here is that he needs to stay, but he needs to stay and take some stuff off his plate. You guys know, if you've been following this channel, I've been saying over and over and over again that he needs to give up the play calling. It's not that he's bad at it. It's that it's too much to handle. It really is. Dick Vermeil had too much on his plate and led him to retirement. Okay. Okay. John Gruden did the same thing, led him to an early retirement, went into the booth, was in ESPN, uh, Monday Night Football, and then he goes back to the NFL, of course, that whole falling out thing. But you get my point, okay? He's been around John Gruden. You know, he's probably, he's talked to Dick Vermeil. I know for a fact he has. Dick Vermeil told us on our Downtown Rams podcast. But the thing here 
is that McVeigh needs to learn from those mistakes that those guys made. Okay. Not that they regret any of that, but you, you have to deal with burnout. You have to be able to manage your workload. You have to be, you can't be afraid and you have to be trustworthy of people to be able to push stuff off your plate and add stuff on other people's plates that can actually take on that workload. In terms of the offense, we have no idea what Liam Cohen did this year. We have no idea what Kevin O'Connell was doing. But I can tell you right now, I feel like Kevin O'Connell, whatever he was doing in accordance to Liam Cohen, I think was doing more than Liam Cohen. And I think he was doing it better than Liam Cohen. Okay. I think a lot of the issues here is the fact that McVay constantly is trying to prop these guys up. He's trying to help his buddies in coaching. He's trying to help guys that, you know, men that are working hard. He's trying to push them to the next level because he is so confident and is so comfortable pushing these guys and getting them better jobs, right? Promoting these guys, either from within or outside the organization, giving them those opportunities. That is a sign of a very good employer. But the problem with that is when you're in coaching, and honestly, you can relay it to real world, you know, just like any sort of job. If you're onboarding constantly, that becomes a hassle, okay? If you're going to have a new offensive coordinator every year, that's going to become a hassle. To have a guy like Zach Taylor leave, to have a guy like Kevin O'Connell leave, you know, you have a Giro Evero on the defensive side of the ball, Aubrey Pleasant, defensive side of the ball. You have all these guys leaving all the time. You're always getting plucked from, okay? That eventually takes its toll. When they had, when Sean McVay had Wade Phillips on the defensive side and he was the defensive coordinator, it gave him that stability and it gave him training wheels, if you will. He didn't have to have a huge stock in the defense. Wade took care of it. He then moved on from Wade and Wade moved on from the Rams because he wanted to have more stock into the defense. Well, the problem is he gets more stock in the defense. He starts changing things up. He goes and gets Brandon Staley, who he's still a big part of the defense. Staley wasn't only managing it, just like Raheem. Still a big part of the defense. Well, the problem is now you're a big part of the defense. Now you got to be a leader of men. Now you got to do all the things that head coaches do. You also got to be, you know, you got to take part in the player acquisition process, whether that is scouting, you know, NFL talent, going in the film room and be like, hey, we need this guy, or in the draft, doing the war room stuff, constantly engaging with either the owner, the GM, the CEO, whatever. You know, that's a lot of work. And then you're calling plays, you're managing the game during the game. It's a lot. So Sean McVay has had to do quite a bit. And it hasn't been like the same guys have been there. He's had to do more and more each year. And he's had to onboard these guys. You had a new running backs coach this year, Rashad Samples. Now you're moving Thomas Brown to tight ends coach. He's still your assistant, uh, assistant head coach, but now he's the tight ends coach. Okay. Now you're moving all these guys. They added all these guys. Jake Peets came in. You know, they added Jay Gruden as an offensive assistant. You know, all sorts. Greg Olson. They brought all these guys in. Okay. So when you have all of these coaches coming in and out, it's a lot of turnover. It's a lot to handle. And again, you have to get people on board, you know, with your process. And that is a big, big, big thing. So if McVay stays, the number one thing he has to make sure he does is he has to be able to go out and find his offensive coordinator. He trusts enough to call the plays. That is the only way Sean McVay I can see is going to be able to stay and be able to with ha basically handle staying. Because I understand, I've been through burnout, not on the level of Sean McVay because I haven't been doing it as long, but since I started in 2016 creating content, yes, it's called burning the candle at both ends, and I myself do it all the time. It's not knowing how to establish the, the work-life balance, establish the work-sleep balance. And Sean McVay just doesn't know how to do that. He, he really struggles with that. It's very well documented. So right now, he needs to go out and he needs to get an offensive play caller. And I think that's either going to be two names. Jordan Rodrigue brought up one of them. And then there was another one that was brought up uh, by a bunch of people. So the first one that Jordan Rodrigue brought up was Frank Reich, formerly the head coach of the Indianapolis Colts and formerly the offensive coordinator under Doug Peterson for the Super Bowl winning uh, Philadelphia Eagles. So I think this makes a ton of sense. Frank Reich is the more older guy. He's the more like veteran. Um, and I feel like 
when you talk about him, he basically his thing is about multiplicity. So his offense, his whole offensive philosophy is going to be about attacking the defense and having something to combat whatever the defense, you know, throws your way. And what we saw with, and it wasn't a great time with Doug Peterson, uh, not Doug Peterson. Um, it wasn't a great time, you know, with Frank Reich in Indianapolis. But what we did see is usage out of the backfield, uh, pass catching wise. And I want to see more of that. You saw in 2017 and 18, Sean McVay really helped Jared Goff out really onboarded him well because he had an elite talent in Todd Gurley that could not only run the ball extremely well, but could also catch it out of the backfield extremely well. There needs to be more of that. And I think Frank Reich would, you know, be able to implement that. You have a really good pass catching back in Kyron Williams. I think Cam Akers is an underrated pass catcher at this point in his career. So you'd be able to bolster those guys usage. I think Reich would rely more on running the ball, setting up the play action instead of just rolling with the play action at, you know, and just running over time uh so i think he'd be keeping sean McVay on the straight and narrow you know as far as balancing the offense this is also a golden opportunity for reich but also since he is getting older you have all these young prospects i mentioned earlier reich isn't a guarantee to be promoted to a head coach it does give you some stability does that mean that a team wouldn't take him away no but it is more likely that a team goes with a Ben Johnson if he stays this year and becomes, you know, the head coach next year. It's likely they go with him over Frank Reich. It's likely they go with a young prospect in D'Amico Ryans over Frank Reich. And those guys are going to keep coming up. So that is a big thing for Sean McVay is finding a guy that is a veteran that's going to have stability. He's going to stay there a long time. It helps you out, not just having a young up and coming guy that you're going to have to see go out the door in a day or two. It seems like the other option is the one that's being talked about the most is Cliff Kingsbury. And there's a lot of buzz about this. If Sean McVay stays, Cliff Kingsbury wants to coach in LA. He wants to coach with him. There's already been talk about this even before he took the job with Arizona that he could go with Sean McVay. They're friends. He was at his wedding, the whole thing. So I think this is the most likely scenario. I think Reich is the best scenario, but I don't think either scenario are bad because I think bottom line is we've reached a point where what I've been saying, what a lot of you have been saying, we were right. Sean McVay has to give up play calling. He didn't want to. And now he's at the point where it's literally retirement or give up play calling. And I think he's going to ultimately decide to not retire. I'm I'm again, this is a gamble. I think Sean McVay staying. And I think Cliff Kingsbury will be your Rams offensive coordinator and play caller for the 2023-2024 season. I really believe that. I think right now, McVay, you're seeing these names come out. You're seeing Reich. You're seeing Cliff Kingsbury. Why do you think they're in the news? I can tell you why. I think they're in the news because I think those have been leaked because I think Sean McVay is really uncertain if he's returning. But one of the main things that has to happen if he returns, he realizes he has to pass the sticks. As my co-host on Believe in Rams would say, Cameron Lynch, he's got to pass the sticks. And, you know, in my opinion, I think Frank Reich is the best option, but Cliff Kingsbury isn't that far behind. I think K Kingsbury is a friend, but also somebody that I think would be more similar to Sean McVay's offense. And I think he'd feel more confident in Cliff Kingsbury, trustworthy of him to call the plays. He's a former head coach as of literally the other day. So I think that is what they're going to do. I think you're you're still going to have your revamping of the coaching staff. There'll be guys that leave, but ultimately speaking, Sean McVay, Cliff Kingsbury, I think that's going to be your duo uh, this upcoming season. I think he's going to stay. As far as the defensive coordinator, if Raheem Morris doesn't get hired somewhere else, I think he returns. I think he absolutely would love to coach around Sean again. I don't think he wants to leave the Rams. I think he's made that very clear. He doesn't want to leave, but if a head coaching opportunity comes, of course he's going to listen. And I would also make the argument that, you know, everyone's talking about Vic Fangio and Sean Payton, but what if Vic Fangio just basically said, you know what, Sean Payton, you're going to be joining whatever team they don't have what the Rams have. This is a huge opportunity for me. I get to coach Aaron Donald and Jalen Ramsey and Bobby Wagner, and I'll take it. So I'll say this right now. I would not be surprised if Raheem Morris gets hired somewhere I would not be surprised if Vic Fangio got talked in by Sean McVay to come with him. Sean McVay once talked in 
a genius on the defense in Wade Phillips, okay? Before he even coached. We know what his resume is. I know him and Sean Payton are friends, but I think Vic Fangio would really consider if just it wasn't in the cards for Sean Payton to go to the Rams and maybe he's looking at the Chargers or whatever if they were to fire Brandon Staley. I think Vic Fangio would consider the Rams. I really believe that. Personally, I think the best course of action is you get Raheem Morris back, but if he becomes a head coach, it's out of your, you know, it's out of your hands. So, in conclusion, my raw thoughts, I'm not going to edit this. This is going to be kind of a new thing for me. I think I'm going to start putting out more videos like this unedited just giving you my raw thoughts on the subject, everything on my head right then and there. Um, but really I, I just believe that Sean McVay will be back. I, that's what I was first told. Um, and then I started to kind of waver a little bit. As you guys know, a lot of that stuff comes out kind of wavers, you know, your opinion, but ultimately speaking, I think when it's all said and done, Sean McVay will come back. The Rams will be back in the thick of it next year. They're going to make up. They're going to make some changes. Like this is not going to be the same roster, <clears throat> there could be some major changes. This is not going to be the same coaching staff, but I do think they will be successful. Again, they have a third place schedule. I think things will be easier for them next year. And as long as they don't have the worst injury plague we've seen in quite some time, again, uh, they should be fine. I think Matthew Stafford will be fine and I'm excited for it. So Sean McVay, bold prediction here. I think Sean McVay returns We'll see about, you know, years after, but as far as this upcoming season, Sean McVay returns, Cliff Kingsbury is his play caller, and I'm going to say it's either Raheem Morris or Vic Fangio as his defensive coordinator. I appreciate you guys watching. Again, this is basically Jake unedited, Jake raw, whatever you want to call it, and uh, I'll see you guys next time. Later, folks.